and his wife Amanda. Uh, I'm impressed with Vance because number one, he's a Boy Scout leader, and it takes a lot to be a Boy Scout leader today than it was 30 years ago when I was in it uh, because of all the, the stuff that's going on with the Scouts to, to have a, a clean chapter and actually have boys, uh, I guess it's it kind of tough just to have an all boys and a Boy Scout nowadays. But, uh, he's, you know, just to read a little bio, uh, I know that he has a Chevron down there because I've been there, down there several times. I think your mom's down there, I think. She works down there. I've talked to her several times, stopped there and ate a couple of things and uh, got some gas a few times. He's a lifelong resident of Forest, Mississippi. Uh, graduated Forest High School in 90. Went on to the University of Southern Miss, so that's a good school. And we have, it, he's been happily married over 22 years in his bio. And we're proud parents of two sons, Briggs and Bonner. Briggs graduated from Forest in 2018, and Bonner is scheduled to graduate in May. Well, congratulations. you got a lot on your plate the next few months. Uh, he's a proud owner of Cox, Chevron, and Forest, a family-owned business for over 55 years. It's been that long? 55 53. years. 56, actually. I think, that, I think that's a, that about a, a year out. <laughs> it's this a little bit, but I'll, I'll correct it. Well, Amanda's a physical therapist, so if anybody goes down in here, we know where to go. Ross, you know, you know where to go. You'll be walking straight when you get through tonight. <laughs> As I said, there's, she, he's a strong school uh, supporter of public school system, and Amanda being awarded Parent of the Year 2018. Well, congratulations. It says they're active in faith and members of the St. Paul Catholic Church of Flowood. But uh, Vance, I think, is it what, District 75? Mm -hmm. District 75 is run for, which encompasses Forest, Morton, does it come into Rankin County a little bit? The whole northeast corner of Rankin County, everything north of Hollywood Road. Which we have maybe some members here that are close to it, or if you've got some family members out there, I know he would appreciate their vote. And seeing that this thing is on uh, video, that will share it with your friends. And um, But we just want to have Vance come up here and tell us a little bit about it. So come on up, Vance. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, Diana, and I appreciate the Tea Party letting me come out here tonight. Uh, I came and spoke about four years ago, um, and not much has changed in my race. Um, like God said, I am just a family man and an honest businessman from Forest, Mississippi. Lived there my whole life. Um, we have been in business for 56 years. My dad opened it in '63. Uh, my oldest son Briggs is working there now for me, so it's three generations on the corner of 1835 and Forest. And I'm happy to do that. Um, I'll tell you how I got involved in politics and how this all came about four years ago. Four years ago, Speaker Gunn, Mark Baker, and a representative from Governor Bryant's office came to Forest, Mississippi and said, look, you've got a guy, send, you're sending us a guy that we can't work with. We've got to have somebody we can work with. And it was about 12 Republicans in the room and we were trying to figure out who can we get to run. Um, me and my wife were going to Meridian the next day and we literally scrolled through our Facebook page I was like, that's a good person. I was like, yeah, but they can't take off three months out of the year. You know, well, there's a good person. Yeah, but they, they don't know enough people can't get elected. And we literally went through everybody we could think of. And A, they weren't electable. Or B, they couldn't take off work. It's hard to find someone who could take off of a job three months out of the year and go to Jackson. Um, I'm blessed with a good business that I've got. And I've got good people working for me. My brother still works with there with me. And so I could take off, and I said, I, you know, I could do this job. I'll try this. <coughs> and four years ago, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I knew I was a Republican, and that's about all I knew. Um, since that time, uh, I lost, obviously, or I wouldn't be back here. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this again. I, I would hope I wouldn't have a voted vote and won. But anyway, so since that time, Initiative 42 was going on. Um, and that just kind of opened my eyes to how much control certain groups wanted, uh, not only over our schools, but over our tax dollars. And I watched as Russ Latino went out and fought against that. And it opened my eyes to what I call the Liberty Movement. Um, I've gone with Russ down to Orlando for a, a summit down there and loved it. And it's funny because when I ran four years ago, Speaker Gunn sat me down and he said, look, God already knows the outcome of this election. You may or may not win. He said, but he already knows the outcome. And at the time, it was crushing to lose. I couldn't understand. I felt confident I was a better candidate. I felt confident I was better for our district. Uh, and I felt confident I was going to do the right thing. What I know now, 
from what I knew four years ago is night and day difference in what I call myself a liberty-minded conservative. Uh, I thank Russ Latino, AFP, Mississippi Center for Public Policy for helping me understand those things. Um, I'm more prepared now than I was four years ago, and I believe God knows that. I believe he knows this was a more important time for me. One of the issues that's coming up um, in the upcoming legislature, 2020 census is coming up, and what's important to me, and I'm sure most anybody in any county they live in, wants someone local to be their representative. You don't want to be represented by somebody from another county. Um, and so when they redraw these lines in 2020, <coughs> District 75 and Scott County vote 65% Republican. We did for Trump, we did for Michael Guest, we did for Phil Bryant. Uh, I spent the last four years as chairman of the Scott County Republican Party. I know these numbers. I also was, in 2016, I was a county chairman for Trump. I've been asked to be a county chairman for Trump in 2020. So I know how strong Republican district we have, but like a lot of counties, all our local people still run on the Democrat ticket. And my representative still runs on the Democrat ticket. And guess what I'm getting at? When they redraw those district lines, in this next legislative session, if, we, if my county sends a Democrat back to Jackson that doesn't represent the values of the people, then they're going to draw him out. And they're going to make it to where Scott County, county cannot send a local representative back to Jackson. Now, Rankin County, I cover Rankin County too, but Rankin County's got more represent, representation than they know what to do with. Some of them could, some of them maybe. Um, but they've got a lot. Um, but Scott County, right now we've got two. We've got Randy Russian from out of Newton County. Uh, and, my, and hopefully myself. Uh, but if I can't get in there, and that's what I tell people, it's my last chance. If I don't win this time, it'll be drawn to where nobody in Scott County can win next time. Um, and so I, it's, that's why I believe I was being more prepared four years later than I was back in 2015. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm excited. I've learned more. I'm a lot more knowledgeable of what I consider liberty uh, and what I consider government intrusion. Uh, I believe we need smaller government, less taxes, lower regulations. And I've just been, I've been excited just this last week. I got a call from Cliff Maloney. Does anybody know Cliff Maloney with Young Americans for Liberty? Young Americans for Liberty have endorsed my candidacy. Um, does anybody know about Win at the Door? Win at the Door campaign is what's going on right now in my district. Um, Young Americans for Liberty have sent a team of recent college graduates uh, most of them political science majors, uh, and they are knocking doors for me. They expect to hit every door three times in five weeks, and they are really knocking doors for me. When I say they're knocking doors for me, I'll, I've been out knocking doors myself, and I'll go through a neighborhood, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go somewhere they haven't been, and I get to knocking on doors, and there's one of my door hangers that they've left. Um, they even had a little girl came to my door and say, hey, I want you to vote for Vance. I said, I'm sure will. <laughs> so, um, that's something that's exciting to me. Uh, if you don't know about Young Americans for Liberty, I, I would suggest that you reach out and uh, find out more information about them. I think they are truly working at the ground level to change the minds, mainly of college students, uh, where we need it most. Um, that bio was a little bit dated. My um, youngest son, Bonner, is at the University of Southern Mississippi right now. Um, and my oldest son is, like I said, back working for me. <coughs> but Bonner, he went down there, went through orientation, and, and he called me and said, Dad, this is crazy. I said, what? He said, there's nothing but liberals here. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, so we're out there and they say, all right, if you feel like, you know, this big group of all these students for orientation, he said, if you feel like you're a conservative, stand up. I said, well, I stood up. And he said, I looked around and there wasn't about four <laughs> people standing up with me. You know, and then, and then they said, all right, if you feel like you're LGBTQT, stand up. And he said, half the room stood up. Oh, he sure. said, it is unbelievable. Um, and he got so excited, he sent me a card, and it was a it was a picture of the Gadsden flag, or it was a representation of it. It wasn't quite that. I had to pull up and see what he said exactly. But he said, I found a conservative group. And I said, great. And it was uh, Turning Point USA. Oh, uh, yeah, it was, is it Southern? And so he, he was so excited just to find a group that he could talk with. Um, mm -hmm. He was student body president at Forrest, uh, and just a great kid. We, uh, me and Amanda went down there yesterday, and, Two girls were walking out of the fraternity house. He's pledging the same fraternity I was in. And we kind of laughed at them or whatever. And, and they spoke, and Amanda spoke to them. Um, I, I said they was making the walk of shame uh, a little early in the morning. Uh, but anyway, and what they spoke, and, and 
they said something. We said, yeah, we're Bonner's dad. They're like, oh, we love Bonner. It was like, they just kind of filled me up. <laughs> so he's doing well down there. Uh, my other son, um, he's, he's autistic. Uh, he's got Asperger's. Um, he went to Jones. Uh, he was a mascot there. Um, got a scholarship to be the mascot. And he called me about nine weeks in. He said, I'm failing every class except the one my cheer coach teaches. I said, well, come on home. Let's go to work. Uh, so he struggles with education. Um, and the special needs bill uh, that Empower pushed back in 2014 and 2015 is another one of the things that opened my eyes. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to have the support of Empower uh, in my campaign as well this time. And I think it's, I think our public schools have, have got to be revamped. Uh, I, I think it's more than a funding issue. Um, I don't think more money will solve the problems in our public schools. Um, and I appreciate what Empower is doing, is kind of opening the eyes and trying to do things different. It may not work, it may not be right, but we've got to do something different. Um, remind me to share a picture with you uh, of a homework material that came out of Lake Middle School a couple weeks ago, and it was Snoop Dogg's impersonation of, um, oh, she was. Declaration of Independence? I don't think it was, I don't know if it was a declaration or maybe a Continental Congress, and it was the representative shizzles of Congress shizzles, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It was an abomination. And that's what's coming out of our schools right now. And and we've got to do something. And I'm not sure what we can do, but we've got to do something to fix our public schools. Um, we can't find teachers, and I think a lot of it because too much regulation is coming from either Jackson or Washington. And we've got to give our school boards more control over our local schools. Forest, Mississippi doesn't have the same issues that Brandon, Mississippi has with their schools. And neither one of them have the same issues that Seattle, Washington has. And they shouldn't be a cookie cutter approach. We've got to figure out ways to educate our kids. Um, I'm trying to think if I've left anything out or if there's anything y'all. If y'all got any questions, like I said, I, I can ramble for, for an hour. If y'all got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes, Tom? The school issue is, is, is big with us, as you heard, that, you know, homeschool the last three years because what was in the books. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you go and talk to the superintendents of school, which I talked to Rich Morrison, his, he was an assistant at the time, and took a seventh grade algebra problem in there. And I put it on his desk and said, Richard, I can't do this. I said, I, I want you to do this. And I said, I know algebra, but I can't do this one. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I can't do it either. Of course, you know, you got PhDs on the wall and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, they make six-figure income and that kind of thing. He says, you know, finally, just threw it. He said, Don, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. I said, first off, you need to get rid of the curriculum. I said, that's number one. Anybody can come up with I can come up with a curriculum. We can go back to, you know, the, back to the days we went to school and come up with the same books. They're still around. Yeah. I said, number two, we need to, to fire that guy yeah, called Carrie Wright up there at uh, 320, what is it, 320,000, 310,000 she makes a year. Mm -hmm. Highest paid superintendent. First day that uh, Obama said boys could go into girls' bathrooms, she wanted to do it up at school in the big group hall up there. Supposed to have an open meeting, they closed it. They didn't even fire them. Shoot. Any, any school boy would fire on the spot. You're going to let little boys and little girls in bathrooms. Come on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, but as far as changing the curriculum, the, the problem that we have is that we've got a lot of money funneled from D.C. here. In fact, Richard told me, so, well, I've got, I'm mandated to do with the money, just like our universities are mandated. When they get a certain amount of money, they got to spend on LGBTQ, they got to spend on this, and spend on that. It's like Dick Cohen does commercials on TV or on the, this jumbotron saying, they're getting on the elevator, putting putting a hat on, yeah. spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a video. And I asked my my uh, uh, my, my senator, I said, uh, "Where's that money coming from?" Well, it's coming from the federal government. I said, "That's tax money. Mm -hmm. that, that's our money being right. spent on a video." Right. right. You go down 49. You look on the right hand side on the west side. You see all these uh, the concrete embankments down there. Mm -hmm. I've been traveling that road for 30 years. 